Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening for our Wednesday evening pre-service meditation here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. So glad you're with us either on Zoom or Facebook Live. So we're going to take the next 10 minutes before service to just get still, to move into the silence, and to bring our awareness into the present moment. So to free our minds of thought patterns about the past, what has happened up until now, and what is yet to come, and to just come into this present moment and to help us focus on the present moment, we can use the tool of the breath. Just focusing on each in-breath and each out-breath. If it helps you to stay focused, you might silently repeat to yourself, I am breathing in, I am breathing out. With the first few breaths, as you breathe in and out, allow each exhale to just release every tension in your body. So you can just stay focused on the breath. This miracle of life that is recreating itself over and over again. And if your mind wanders, which is absolutely natural, this is your opportunity to really cultivate that inner observer, that non-judgmental observer, to just notice. Notice that you got engaged in a thought pattern. Maybe label it thinking. Notice that you were hearing a sound, hearing, feeling a sensation, feeling. And then once you've noticed where the mind went, very gently, with great compassion, bring your attention back to the breath. Breathing in, breathing out.
So gently bring your awareness back into your body. Become aware of your surroundings, the weight of your body, and whatever you're seated on right now. Maybe wiggle your toes and fingers, shrug your shoulders. And as you feel comfortable, open your eyes. So once again, welcome to everyone to our Wednesday evening virtual service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. Welcome to those of you who joined during the meditation. Uh, just before we begin our service this evening, I do want to say a special thank you to practitioners Liz Racy and Dean Regan, who covered for me last week so I could be busy with all the activities I was coordinating for my friend Claire, who turned 100 years old last Wednesday. So thank you, thank you. You did a beautiful job. I uh, loved watching it. And with that, now that we're here for this service, let's begin with our opening chant led by our wonderful Sam Krieger and Gia Jambotti. <laughs> So, with that, let's turn inward for a moment. And as we turn inward, let us become aware of that part of us that every moment is seeking to be full of joy, to experience wholeness, abundance, peace, every form of well-being possible. And let us recognize that impulse as a vibration, an impulse that is felt throughout the universe, because that is the impulse of God's infinite goodness, God's infinite nature, out of which everything comes into being and that lives and moves and has its being throughout every part of creation, including in, through, and as me, in, in through, and as every person gathered for this virtual service this evening. I know that we are all filled and surrounded by the love, the joy, the goodness of the divine. It is our true nature. And God being in all places and things, I know that God is unfolding beautifully throughout our time together this evening. I celebrate its presence as a vibration of love that allows us to feel our interconnectedness even when we are not in the same location. I absolutely honor how it uplifts and inspires us as it moves through our music ministries, ministry through Sam and Gia this evening. I open to being a channel through which the message that is to be spoken this evening is spoken. 
I know that we have all come together by divine appointment to hear this message, to awaken to any truths that come forth, myself included. And so I know that every part of the service, the love of all those who are volunteering their time this evening, everything is filled with the nature of God and everything blesses us and uplifts us. And so I'm giving thanks for all the healing and revealing we experience during this time. And in gratitude, I release this word knowing it is already so in the mind of God. And so it is. And together we say, Amen. So please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A moment of silence between each drop of rain holds all the stillness of a beautiful refrain a pause with each breath brings new inspiration the ember that starts the flame in our hearts from the fire of creation with sisters and brothers Side by side, cross this land, walking together, step by step, hand in hand, the wonders we are, oh, in endless variations, remember that star, the flame in our fire of creation hey, your smile could power the sound and when you laugh ooh, I come undone you could follow or leave this long journey home, arts and destinies into the unknown, well, let's be on our way without hesitation, we'll make a new start. From the fire of creation, we'll make a new star with a flame in our hearts. From the fire of creation, we'll make a new star with a flame in our heart. From the fire of creation.
Thank you, Gia. I felt it. <laughs> well, good evening again. I'm wanting to look at the idea this evening of staying on track. Now, you know, one of the things that we promote a lot in this teaching is the importance of living in a state of gratitude, of really cultivating the sense of gratitude for all the good that surrounds us. Because you know we just have such a tendency to take things for granted. And the more we focus on gratitude, the more you know, we raise our vibration of love and joy, and that just brings more and more good into our lives. Well, I can say that there is one thing, at least, that I never take for granted and that I constantly am feeling grateful for. And that is all the guidance systems that we have at our disposal these days to ensure that we can navigate along the roads and freeways and everything and get to our destinations. And nowadays, you know, in the most time effective way. I mean, I'm so grateful because I just remember so many times that feeling of being lost and not being able to figure out the maps that I had and how to get to where I wanted to go. And I love how these devices inform us if we're off track, like if they gave us a direction that we didn't quite understand, that they will let us know that we're off route and that they'll recalculate to provide us the directions on how to get back on track. My partner Joe and I purchased our first GPS. And this is way back when, when they didn't even have these devices on phones. But we purchased our first one before going on a trip to France because the prior year we had traveled around Italy. And what we discovered is that it's pretty easy to get from one town to the next on the different highways and routes leading to the town, but once you arrived at a city such as the town of Verona, it's not that big a town. It took us an hour and a half to get into town and an hour and a half to get out. And we just decided, you know, they're coming out with these devices now, we need to get one because we were gonna be traveling around France. So what uh, we wouldn't have given I would say, back in those days for when we were getting lost in the towns of Italy for that little voice to tell us, in 400 feet, turn right, and how to navigate around those detour signs that you weren't expecting, we weren't expecting. Well, I would say that probably most of us have had experiences where we felt that somehow our lives have gotten off track, that we've gotten off track, and we're just feeling a sense of unhappiness, discontent, frustration, uh, whatever form of negative feelings. In Science of Mind, what we would teach is any time we're not experiencing God's nature, we're off track. You know, that nature resides at the center of our being, at the center of everything in creation. And it's just up to us to be aware of it and to really sense it as the innermost truth about us, about everything, to experience it more. When we're experiencing joy and love and peace and fulfillment and creativity, uh, that sense of freedom, abundance, when we're feeling vital and whole and inspired, we're basically just in alignment with that core nature of spirit and, spirit and it's flowing through us and we're experiencing it in our worldly experience. When we're not, when we're experiencing any sense of fear, unhappiness, discontent, any form of pain or suffering, we're not feeling our connection with God. The suffering is basically the result of us not sensing the ultimate truth of God's nature being what is most true, most real about us, 
about everything and everyone in creation, no matter what the current circumstances. Now, the good news about this is that we have the power, we have the means to change our perceptions, to change our thinking, to recalculate our mindset, to realign with that core nature, you know, to call it forth and to experience it. We have the capacity to be aware of when we're off track and get back on track. We have our own inner GPS to guide us. And what helps us to activate and to you know, tune into that inner GPS is all the spiritual practices that we promote. You know, I know in some traditions, uh, we may have been raised with the idea that we do a spiritual practice because that's what God wants us to do, to please God. Our spiritual practices are for us, for us to awaken, to, to really cultivate that sense of the divine within us, to experience it more fully. So all of our tools like our meditation, our prayer, affirmations, being of service, tithing, all of those things are things that help us to remember and to reconnect with that divine core nature, to activate it so that we're more conscious of it. Because the fact is the world of effects is quite mesmerizing. It's very easy to think that things in the world have power over us or determine whether or not we can be happy, we can be fulfilled, we can love and be loved. Our physical senses do not uh, reinforce the sense of our interconnectedness. There's a point at which, you know, I feel like I end, that Mark stops here and something else, some other form of creation begins. You know, it, it's something that we have to cultivate to realize that's really an illusion. Everything is interconnected in the one. And so it takes the constant reminders for us to stay aligned, attuned to that spiritual nature. And that's why we promote a regular spiritual practice. You know, because we can get pulled off track so easily, we want to be doing our practices, prayer, meditation, tithing, all the things I mentioned, to keep reinforcing the truth. When we have that regular practice, it helps us to become more aware of when our thought patterns and our feelings aren't in alignment with the spiritual truth. When something is off and that we need to make an adjustment, you know, whenever we're off track in our thinking or in our perceptions, when we're really buying into this sense of lack and limitation being separate from that infinite goodness of God, the universe sends us signals. You know, there are negative feelings that come up immediately. The problem is, if we're not practicing regularly, if we're not taking that time to get still and just detach and notice our thoughts and suddenly notice I'm not my thoughts, I'm not my feelings, there's some bigger consciousness that I'm a part of, if we're not doing these practices of reminding ourselves of the spiritual truth of God within ourselves, then we're, we're not as tuned into that truth and those feelings that come up, they just start to drive our behaviors. We, we don't even become aware that, wait a second, I'm off track here. It's like we just are, are driven by them. And so going back to this GPS analogy, and one thing I have to say is that over the years, um, they've really improved the technology. That first GPS device that I told you about when we were on our trip to France, um, that was when GPS, the, the, they were fairly new devices. Not everyone had one in their car. You certainly couldn't, you know, 
get that kind of guidance on your phone. And so um, Joe and I had been using this GPS, and we were just marveling at the way, uh, you know, with her voice, somehow we, we decided her name. It was actually my friend Bonnie who heard her, and we decided to name her Lola. Um, Lola just was so accurate in getting us right to the doorsteps of our hotels or you know, wherever we were staying and whatever towns we were going to visit. But the one issue we had is that if there was a long distance to cover, there was something about the memory that we couldn't program our destination if it was a small town, that we couldn't really search for smaller villages. We could always put in some of the larger towns, but the small villages we couldn't put in until we were closer to them. So it would only show you know, the smaller villages within a certain radius. And there was one day that we were covering quite a bit of territory. And so we realized we were going to a village named Konk, a lovely um, little medieval village. And um, we couldn't find it when we were starting out. So we decided, well, let's put in the name of this other town that's farther away, quite a bit farther away, actually. But it was uh, in the right direction. And then we knew that when we got closer, we would see the signs for Conk. We could then search for Conk. So we put in, or I thought I put in, the town. Well, I did type in the town Marciac. And there were several choices that came up. But of course, you know, I knew which one to pick. So I picked it. Now, as we were going along, after a period of time, we knew it was going to take a while to get there. But there was a certain point at which something didn't feel right. It really didn't seem like we were on track. But you see, Lola had just been so reliable until now that we didn't want to pay attention to our inner GPS. We wanted to just let the worldly GPS guide us. And so we tuned out those feelings of something doesn't feel right. No, no, you know, it's just a different way. She knows how to get us the, there the fastest. And yet it just felt like we were getting farther and farther away from civilization. You would have thought that I would have, you know, really tuned in when we're in this really remote, very beautiful, but really remote area. And even the cows are looking at us like, what are you doing here? No one comes here. And we're expecting to arrive at, you know, a fairly large town. This isn't a human in sight. And at one point, Lola told us to turn right off of a little country lane onto this gravel driveway that was so overgrown that as we're driving along, the tree branches are scraping along the sides of our car. Imagine how amused we were when she then announced arriving at destination. We're supposed to be going to a town. <laughs> and I then see as we pull through this wooded area, this dilapidated, abandoned chateau with the name of the town that we were trying to get to. No, we weren't amused. <laughs> we were not. There were so many signs, inner signs, I mean, outer and inner signs. Our intuition was telling us that we were off track, but we ignored it. We depended on that outer GPS, that human device, not our inner one. How often do we ignore or suppress the feelings that indicate we're not operating from a sense of God's presence within and around us. You know, how often do we just not want to deal with it? Do we not want to face our fears, our insecurities, our negative thoughts, our beliefs and lack and limitation, and thereby get further and further off track? I'm sure that has happened to most of us. So, I was thinking, 
know, today, um, thank you to our practitioner, Mary Catherine O'Hart, who reminded us this morning on our morning meditation that today is Ash Wednesday, which is the beginning of Lent. And this is a time when Christians uh, are asked to give up some kind of worldly pleasure uh, for 40 days. You know, and sometimes it may be we give up some kind of favorite food or activity or, you know, maybe not watch as much TV, whatever. Uh, and the purpose of the spiritual practice is to realize that we're not dependent on things in the world. That if something in the world is taken away from us, there's still some other way to experience God's nature. That's the underlying um, principle behind that. But you know, for us to stay on track spiritually, we need to give up our beliefs of lack, limitation, all those ideas of I'm not enough, there isn't enough, things have to be a certain way for me to be happy, you know, that people have to change for me to feel okay, to be at peace any of those thoughts and beliefs that do not reflect the truth of God's ever presence within and around us. And we need to replace those thoughts with the truth of God's infinite goodness lying within us in all beings and that that nature is what's most true and most real about all of us, about everything in creation. So the process to do that, the way to get that inner GPS working for us, is to begin by asking, you know, what am I believing about this situation that's causing me to feel negatively? So first, if we've had a regular spiritual practice, we're more tuned in to noticing, oh, I'm feeling some sense of angst. I'm feeling some sense of frustration or uh, frustration, whatever and look at what is the underlying thought that's causing this feeling. Is it I'm not enough, there isn't enough, things can never change, I need to change, I need them to change, I can never forgive, what is it? That's the idea we need to let go of. That's what we need to release. And then we can ask ourselves, well, what do I need to embrace? God in me is more than enough. God is my infinite source and supply. God in me can accept others no matter how they show up. God in me can forgive. And then follow that up by imagining yourself in that place of fully having embraced this new belief and the empowerment, the freedom, the goodness that you experience you know, inwardly as you imagine that. And in so doing, you're turning your awareness to God. You're opening to that nature in and around you and thereby getting yourself back on track. So let's just do that process together briefly. So just turn within for a moment and call forth into your awareness any area in your life where you're feeling out of sorts, any kind of discontentment, frustration, any form of pain or suffering. And whatever you've called forth, ask yourself, what am I believing about this situation? that's causing me to feel negatively. Again, it might be something like, I'm not enough. There isn't enough. Things can never change. I need to change. I can't forgive. Whatever comes forth as an idea that would cause some sense of lack and limitation. That's an idea, a belief, a perception that you're now going to set your intention to let go of. And 
And now ask yourself, what do I need to embrace? What is the perception, the belief I need to embrace? That God in me is more than enough. God in me can accept others, can forgive. God is my infinite source and supply. Whatever it is, just feel yourself embracing that mindset and imagine yourself in that place of having fully embraced it and how wonderful that feels. And just know that already through this brief exercise, you've allowed yourself to connect with your true self, with God's essence in you. Just by doing that, you've activated the process of getting back on track to experience your divine nature, your wholeness, your goodness your well-being. And so from this place in consciousness, please join me in prayer. As we continue to allow ourselves to feel that goodness that permeates all creation, it is the goodness of God out of which everything is created and that lives and moves and has its being in all that is. I absolutely know that that presence of God and all the aspects of God's nature are the very essence of my being, of every being, everywhere. We are all expressions of the divine. And so let us know the truth collectively, right here, right now, that where there is any sense of discomfort around change in the world. That the truth is that God's nature in all beings is changeless. It is ever present to be experienced in some new way. It is a vibration that connects us eternally. It is birthless, deathless, that if the change is a change in which loved ones that we've had with us are no longer with us, we still remain connected with them eternally. And we remain connected with that essence that can come forth and be experienced in some new way. Where there is any experience of dis-ease or discord, let us remember the truth right now of God's absolute perfection, health, wholeness. That vibration that heals all human conditions that provides a solution in the healing of this pandemic and every other form of dis-ease, physical, mental. As we know, God's presence is there. The pathway into well-being is revealed. For any experience of feeling unfulfilled, we remember right here, right now, that that Nature of the divine is a creative principle. It is a, an infinite giver-receiver and has something unique and wonderful to give through each of us. And as we awaken to that truth, we're each guided to those perfect ways to share of that God nature in our unique ways, through our unique talents and gifts. We know that this vibration of the divine is infinite and that it has nothing about it that is a reflection of lack and limitation. And so where there's any human experience of that, let us know the truth of God being the infinite giver, receiver in every being. And let that open up every heart to experience a greater sense of giving more abundantly and taking in and being sourced and supplied in every way. And let us absolutely remember that the core nature of the divine and the core nature of all creation is love. And as we know that truth, that vibration of love expands our hearts so we can experience greater self-love and love for others and let that love flow forth into all activities. And knowing that that vibration of love is one that is always for goodness, let us follow us in its impulse 
by setting our own intentions for greater good in silence. And so whatever these intentions may be, greater good for ourselves, loved ones, situations in the world, let us know that we're feeling the vibration of God for greater revelation of itself in all these situations. And as we know that God is there, good is revealed. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth. And so it's with a heart just filled with gratitude that I release this word, knowing it is already done in God's mind. And so it is. And together we say, Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, this is our time in our service for our affirmative giving. So, um, just a reminder, different ways that you can give right now. Um, you can go to the link, nhcrs.org forward slash give, and that takes you straight to our donation page. You can also text the word give to area code 818-457-3419. And we will be here uh, in the church office to uh, take any of your donations over the phone by credit or debit card. Um, the number is 818-762-7566. Give us a couple of minutes after the service to get over to the church office, and um, then we'll be there for about 20 to 30 minutes afterwards. Um, so if you'd like to call in at that time. So uh, also, for those of you who are prefer to just send in your checks, uh, we accept any way that you are supporting us with deep gratitude. Thank you so much for your continued support of our community. And with that, let's set our intention as we say our statement of affirmative giving together. And if you want, put your hands to your heart. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. Try on. 
So as we wind down our service and bring it to a close, I want to start off just by thanking everyone who's of service this evening. Um, tonight, let me begin here in the sanctuary by thanking wonderful Adam, as always, for making sure we're seen and heard up here, to Doreen, who is managing everything technically here. Uh, well, you don't see it, but we've got a little workstation right here, and she's just switching from one camera to the other and keeping things going, to Brenda, who is on the second camera, um, to Nikki, who is shadowing Brenda, to make sure she's there for backup, Blair, as always, and of course, her wonderful musical support this evening. Thank you, Gia and Sam, once again. Um, and then out there in the virtual world, thank you to practitioners Christine Crawford and Liz Racy, who was up here last week. Thank you both for uh, holding us uh, the high watch in consciousness during the service. On Zoom, thank you to Lynn Romanowski, Barbara Berg, Dean Regan and Ray Regan for your support. And on Facebook Live, Melissa Allen, thank you, thank you, thank you to, uh, for all your help in keeping us all connected virtually. Um, again, a reminder that uh, you can give your tithe online, nhcrs.org forward slash give. Plus, we will be here at the church office for 30 minutes after service, 818-762-7566, uh, or you can call in your donation. And uh, you can also text the word GIVE to 818-457-3419. Prayer with a Practitioner is available after the service on Zoom. If you're on Facebook Live right now, just go to our website, get to the Zoom link, and you can be put in a private breakout room for prayer one-on-one -on -one with a practitioner. You can uh, continue to send in your prayer requests via email, prayer at nhcrs.org, or call in to the church office, and option four connects you with our ministry of prayer where you can leave a message. Uh, and we check those voicemails and emails every evening and send out those prayer requests to all our practitioners. Uh, next week, We'll be back for our Wednesday evening service. Again, meditation is 10 minutes prior to the service, so at 6.50, service is at 7, both on Facebook Live and Zoom, same link you're on right now. And my topic will be moving through and beyond. Living a Course in Miracles is meeting via Zoom, and that group is facilitated by our practitioner, Jeannie Laporte, who just does a beautiful job in covering the material in Course in Miracles. And so they'll be meeting tomorrow evening, Thursday, at 7.15 to 9.15. All are welcome. This coming Saturday, we will be having a memorial service on Zoom for our beloved practitioner, Scott Vance. Um, and so that's going to be this Saturday again, the 20th at 10 AM on Zoom. Uh, everyone is welcome to attend. We'll be lighting a candle at the beginning of the service, so uh, everyone's going to be asked to light a candle, so if you want to make sure you have a candle beforehand so you can do that at home and uh, have something to light it with handy. And the Zoom link for that can be found on our website. Our annual meeting, so this is the annual meeting for members of our church. It's being held this coming Sunday, right after the 11 a.m. service, and that's going to be on Zoom. So here's the important part. If you are a church member that normally uh, follows the service on Facebook Live, either that Sunday, come on for the service, because you know we can start uh, getting our quorum uh, right at the beginning of the 945 service, um, or switch over to Zoom after the service so that uh, you'll be counted for the quorum and can attend. It'll start at 11 a.m. The Zoom link is the same link that we use for this Wednesday or the Sunday service. And you can always find it on our website if you lose track of it. And so a notification letter was emailed to all members. If you didn't receive it, 
We invite you to check your spam or your junk inbox just to see if it might be there. And um, we just look forward to seeing you there. And we invite you to save the date right now for a spring concert that we're going to be having on Friday evening, March 12th at 7.30 p.m. on Zoom with uh, wonderful performers Bill Jones and Reverend Sidney Lehman Steen. We'll have more information and the ability to purchase tickets on our website soon. But save the date. It's going to be a, a great concert. The uh, tickets will be uh, sold for $30. Our Zoom virtual patio meets before and after all uh, the Sunday and the Wednesday services. So want to connect with our congregation, get on 20 minutes before or stay on after. Uh, those of us who are here for the service, like Dr. Mark, myself this evening, will get on and join you. Um, and so that's a chance for us to stay connected that way. Our men's group will not be meeting this coming Sunday. They normally meet every Sunday from 11 to 11.30, but they won't meet this Sunday. So uh, men can join us for the annual meeting, but they'll resume the following Sunday, the 28th. And our Zoom meditation continues every Monday through Saturday, 8 to 8.15. So it's a great experience. I love being part of that. Um, if you haven't joined before, hope you'll be able to join us one morning and uh, meditate with us. And just visit our website, nhcrs.org, for all the information on the Zoom links, how to get to these different events, and to get weekly blasts or newsletters, sign up for those. It's all on nhcrs.org. So with that, let's take this moment to turn inward one more time. So just giving thanks for all the blessings that we have received during our time together. I just absolutely know that through the different elements of the service, different aspects of our consciousness have been touched and awakened and that we now leave with a greater sense of that divine essence of our being, that we recognize it's always there, and if we are not sensing it, that it's there to bring us back on track. We carry that awareness into our lives, into the world that ripples out and blesses others. And so I give thanks for all these blessings that we've received and how they multiply as we go forward. And in deep, deep gratitude, just release this word knowing it's already so in the one universal mind and we get to experience the truth of it as we go about our lives. And so I simply let go and let God saying, and so it is. Thank you once again for joining us. Let's join together in song to close out the service. Mm -hmm.